about. I, I feel like we need to put all of this in the official interview. I feel like we need to. No, we don't <laughs> need to. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll we'll like we'll put in some audio of like people at the grocery store, like someone's over the intercom looking for Mind Chamber. Can Mind Chamber please report <laughs> to the front? To the front of the store, please. Is there a mind chamber in this store? Your family's <laughs> in the front and are very worried. <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> How did I get in here? How's how's everything going though, honestly? It's going great. Thanks no. for asking, Zim. Oh, you asking? Uh, <laughs> I was asking my chamber, you fucking. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> Ready? Welcome to the Newgrounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Psycho Goldfish and Zinzinix. podcast robot day is almost upon us so we got a very special guest the uh, founder of robot day and i believe the inventor of robots my chamber how you doing buddy hey man how's it going man how you been doing Ooh. great man good to talk to you and of yeah. course we've got uh, my my co-pilot who's not Ooh. very much of a robot he's, he's dumb as shit unlike yeah. robot uh, zin Zinix. hey hi yeah. hey, right, thank you wow. yeah it's an honor to be a guest here today on mind chambers podcast we're yes, gonna call it, yes. We're going to call it Brain Cage. It's the latest cage. innovation in podcasting. That's right. <laughs> Everyone tune in to Brain Cage, where we pick Mind Chamber's brain. In a it's cage. a perfect podcast. The guests ask him the questions. Like, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> he doesn't have to do any preparation. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking yeah, go. Baby. Yeah, baby. So Robot Day. How are we feeling about Robot Day coming up? I'm actually kind of excited, especially with all this hype. I mean, we've we've had some really good submissions in the last couple of years, but I have a feeling I'm gonna I'm gonna be judging for quite a while with this one. So, <laughs> getting a lot of DMs, so I'm, I'm I'm like a little nervous, but uh, hopefully, I, you know, do a good job judging. We'll see. So how did uh, how did you end up starting Robot Day? Like, what was what was the deal? Like, you're just like, you know, Tom, we don't got enough fucking stupid holidays on Newgrounds. What if we did a robot one? I just you know. Um, hmm. Originally, the day was pushed back because, you know, I had, you know, unfortunately had to do other jobs and stuff like that. But originally, the date was July 10th, if you remember. Yeah. And that was just my way of uh, saying happy birthday to uh, Tesla. And that's that's why I wanted that's to right, make it that day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For those who don't know, uh, my chamber, fucking huge mark for Nikola Tesla. If you don't know who, if you don't know who Nikola Tesla is, get educated because like oh, everybody knows now. I just, I feel like the the last person now. Everybody seems to know who he is now. That's pretty crazy. Back in the day, I, didn't, I was like, holy crap, who is this guy? Like, I don't know. I, I I bet you a lot of people, if you ask them who Tesla was, they'd say, isn't that Elon Musk? He oh, died right. poor and broke and basically penniless. He got nothing for inventing what he did for electricity. Like, he was the original Newgrounds. I mean, he like gave his all to the world and gave us yeah. so much great stuff. And then stuff Thomas Edison showed up with his him. goons and tried to blame yeah. it. And then it, he bullied <laughs> Tesla and he never earned a freaking penny. But he was a genius. So there's he a was. lot of love on that side. He was. The uh, original New Grounds. The Ethan Hawk one was, I don't know if you guys saw, that it's been like a, a couple of like starts and finishes with these movies that like some of them failed some of them didn't but the little ethan hawk movie that came out wasn't too bad i don't know if you saw it um i haven't what is it what is it it's 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 just called nicola and it's he plays nicola tesla in it and just they give you like a little 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 backstory and they they make it a little little art housey you know because you could tell it's a little low budget so they kind of jump back and forth with regular time but i thought it was neat um, and hopefully, you know, people that don't know who he is will watch it because I thought it was a pretty good movie. <laughs> See, that's a few PBS ones on him too, but whatever. That's I mean, there's, of, there's so there's many, something... but you got to watch them. You got to yeah. watch it. There's something. What do you mean, so many? Well, anyway, um, there's, there's hundreds something... <laughs> of Tesla documentaries. They're not hard to find. Seriously, there's something like really interesting about someone who's highly intelligent and just doesn't get paid their worth. I I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. Mind Chamber, your early days. I mean, what were those like for you? Uh, Speaking of not getting paid your worth. 
<laughs> really though? Well, I you know, uh let's see. I graduated obsolete. I had been uh went to school SVA, uh was learning animation. They didn't really have a proper animation department at the time. So they kind of bunched us up with the film department and just kind of pushed things along. Uh I, my teachers were animators on Terry Tunes and uh what's the other one? Oh jeez. Now I had a barrel, something so little, something a little lower than that. But uh they essentially taught us how to use an Oxberry machine. I'm sure nobody knows what that is. They taught us how to use a Steinbeck. What that? No, sure wait. What, what you have is. to elaborate this. This is the Boomer episode, please. Foreign <laughs> technology to us Zoomers. Tell us what is uh, uh, a something Berry machine? Oxberry Farms. Oxberry machine. I believe that was the the guy who created. That was his last name. And basically, it's a giant film camera that's set facing down. Sometimes they're 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 uh, they're actually a few stories high if they're if they're doing parallax. But the normal one is just facing down on a plate. Uh, you got, you know, gurneys and little wheels and, and cogs, and you got to spin spin the, the stage in, in place and take your photo and then move the next image and take a photo just like that. And uh, Steinbeck is uh, how you edit it. You actually, you know, you recorded your audio on film, not not movie film, but regular film, and you just it tape and you sat there. And you listened to it, and you scrubbed it, and then you, when you found the part you want, you took a pair of scissors, and you cut that part out. Holy shit, and you learned and all of that. Now, how does that apply to you today? Absolutely nothing. I find <laughs> a complete waste of time. Well, that's, the, that's uh, the interesting thing, though. Like you went, you went to animation school like pretty much right on the brink when that technology, it was still being used, but it was being phased out. Like You're one of the guys... In the Newgrounds community, in particular, there's like I, you can count on one hand how many went through that education and then jumped into digital and, and started doing Flash and shit. Like how, when you first got into Flash, like how did that just blow your mind after having to slug through the old school way of doing like fucking? Oh man, I they were, <laughs> I took an intern job at a at a starting uh, at a startup that was doing uh, Flash, and at first it was just they were using Shockwave. And um, I was going to I was going <clears> to <throat> help them make some games using Shockwave. And I still was like, oh, this is pretty neat. It still was a little bit of a process for me. I didn't have I didn't have a tablet. So I had to buy you know, an Epson scanner. I would draw all my pictures by hand. Then I would ink them. I would scan them in and then I would um, put them through uh, Adobe Streamline. Anybody remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. I'll nod my head. Sure. So it, it turns it into a vector EPS file, and that allowed me to bring it into Flash. And uh, that was a pain in the ass. Wait, it lets, it lets your pen and ink drawing be turned into an asset to be used in he, Flash. He basically did the, the old-fashioned way where he drew every frame on physical media and then imported it into the computer, which is it's basically the, the same thing. You have each frame, and you got to take a picture of it. But unlike... With the camera, like the camera, you push a button and you've got your frame. He had to scan them. And I don't know if you're familiar with how slow scanners were back then. <laughs> that had to take you, a while. When I figured that out, I thought I'd, I've, I had found the future because it was so <laughs> damn quick. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I, I, I didn't touch a tablet for, for a while. And, um, and even when tablets finally got in, you know, I finally got my hands on one. It took me – I still couldn't get used to it. It's it's it wasn't intuitive for me. I had to still draw a lot of st a lot of more complicated drawings. I had to just do on paper, and uh, I just started. I, in fact, <laughs> I had to put a piece of paper and tape it over my tablet because it just didn't feel right, and I just couldn't get I couldn't get the friction, and it just felt like my hand was like like I had no motor control. It's like it was just whipping across. Oh my god! I, <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like trading a new portion of your brain to understand something other than what it's known. You know, yeah. like no. Oh, yeah. This and you're looking, wrong. you're looking. You're looking at the wrong way. It doesn't feel right. You're not looking at what you're actually drawing on. It's it. It is definitely a weird thing to adapt to. And I still can't do it. I have to have like a, a screen tablet. I can't do it without a screen. But uh, I think what happened was I think I mean I couldn't tell you for sure without looking into the history of it. But I'm pretty sure SVA did the art stuff as a side teaching gig thing where they. They were always pumping out uh, animators for the local studios. And a lot of local studios just did the quick and dirty stuff. 
uh, Terry Toons, uh, Ralph Bakshi Studios and stuff. And they really kind of taught you in a, almost a machine-like factory-like way. They weren't, you know, we had the first year, they kind of taught us a little squash stretch, anticipation, easing out. And then that was it. And then they're like, all right, we're going to need to teach you how to, you know, do loops as quickly as possible, blah, blah, blah. And then, and that was it. <laughs> and they, you know, unless you had, unless you had the foresight to kind of realize that this is not where it's going or unless you had, uh, and I didn't, unless you had like kind of like um, the ability to just re are really good and talented. I will tell you right now that I just learned what they taught me and I thought that was it. I didn't, I didn't really think there was more to it. I thought I was, I was like, wow, what happened? This is it. But, you know, there's a lot of guys, I can tell you right now, Titmouse, he he came from SVA, and he's he's around that time. He was a couple of years before me. So that's just, like, there's different experiences. People got out of it. They knew how to hustle more. They knew how to get out there more. But for me, I went to school, and then I went to work, and then that was it. But, um, yeah, if, if they didn't, like, see any potential in you, they pretty much kind of just pushed this, like, factory type of mentality on you. Like, all right, you just need to learn how to be able to do this quickly, blah, blah, blah. So it felt more like a an apprentice job almost apprenticeship. Were you getting uh, paid anything? No, no. The oh interest. Oh my no. god! No, no. That was school. I paid them. Well, I that's paid. That's wild. That's how school works, Zen. That's how school I, works. Well, if you this get an internship, it, it, if you get an internship in something like engineering, you're the fool for not getting paid for doing that. But if you're doing something like animation, I guess it's typically the norm is to just oh no all, all art based careers they fucking just take so much advantage of students. It's ridiculous. I will say ridiculous. now though, like for instance, like my final uh my final animation for first year was a walk cycle. Okay. Like final animations now for first year of SVA is like a four minute cartoon. So it has ramped up and they've realized, you know, obviously that there is there's money involved in this. There's there's actual potential to have like some some full animation courses. So my experience back then is obviously a lot different than now. I'm sure anybody who's at SB now is probably like, what? But believe me, I, I get it. There's a lot of really good animators coming out of it now. And it's, they, they ramped up all their tech. So obviously, it's been 20 years. The, the tech I and have... the culture has changed. Like back in your day, like if you were an animator, you had to go work for an animation studio. That was it. There was no YouTube or like even Newgrounds. Right. You know, you couldn't just go and do it, make your own thing. So yeah, I, I could see why everything changed. And it was, and yeah, they really were just, when I was doing it, it was pretty backwards the way they thought. I wasn't allowed to use the computers. I used to sneak into uh, the computer department because I, I got I got my taste of Photoshop and like mm -hmm. After Effects uh, 2. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is crazy. I, I could do like fake 3D with this. And um, and they would ask me for my ID card. And I'm like, oh, I left it. And like, well, do you have anything else? I'm like, oh, you're, you're in the animation department. You're not supposed to be here. <laughs> you're in the animation department you're not supposed to be in computer class you're not one of us yeah exactly so um yeah that was very frustrating uh, uh, now but, uh, i'm confused as to why you chose animation then, because back then it wasn't seen as profitable you like you said you're being treated like machines like just uh, to push out a product good no good uh good good question i actually went for film but uh i was living on my own and i didn't have they Realized that I was going to be applying for all these loans and stuff uh, uh, as it emancipated, I guess, though? No? Whatever. Yeah, I believe so. Every every couple of years, they kept raising the age that you can go to school on your own without without um, without uh, uh, parent signature. So um, they, were, they were saying, okay, I was able finally able to do that. And uh, they're like, yeah, you know, guy, these, the, the film rental equipment is, is just going to destroy you. I mean, uh, you know, and they, cause they asked me what I did for a living at the time. And I explained to them and they said, why don't you, why don't you go for animation? And I'm like, Oh, that's not really what I wanted to go for. They're like, well, you're showing us your portfolio. It's all animation. I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> I, I don't have really any money to, to film people. And I didn't, I don't have many friends. So, I'm going to make some up and, and draw them. And, and I was trying to show that I could make a story. And that's pretty much the only reason why I went there with an animated portfolio. I, I animated some toys. Uh, and then I did like a little wolf transformation on Mario paint. And what else? And I actually uh, did like a little spaceship flying on postcards. And I was able to just take that and put it 
uh, take pictures of it with uh, with like a camera and then just speed speed it on my VHS. That's what I brought. <laughs> that was my before and some pictures, some drawings here and there. But honestly, I was going for film. But they saw everything you did via like the drawings and storyboarding, and they're like, "Just do animation, dude. It's cheaper." You're, you're, you're like, clearly yeah, already doing it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're clearly already pretty good at it. <laughs> well, thanks. I, I would say it, it, it took a while, and I'm still not great. I don't know if you see some of these kids. They're they're like okay, yeah. But you now. can say that about anyone. I mean, there's someone in chat right now who's like 18, really great. Uh, artist blowing up right now there's a 60 year old in the chat right now too a phenomenal animator uh, but the younger crowd is always going to be more talented in yeah. some way shape yeah. or form that's true that's just how it is and yeah. honestly that younger crowd got that way because the previous generation inspired them to do it and like the older old timers have been sharing tips and tricks and you know tutorial videos on youtube for like over a decade now i i imagine if i asked the chat right now how much of your skills did you learn from like older guys posting shit on YouTube and shit? There's, there's going to be a good show of hands, right? So, I mean, don't sell yourself short. You might not be the same skill level as a lot of these guys, but you help get them there. So like, we're, we're all part of the chain. Well, I'm not, that's, you are. Well, well, that's very <laughs> sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have a question you got, you both should be able to answer uh, relatively easily. Which one of you joined new grounds first? Joined first. I think Jose. Yeah. Um, right. I'm trying oh, to remember. I shouldn't have answered. Hold on. <laughs> I'm trying yeah, to remember. Because yeah. Remember, because I didn't. Um. I. I was. I was part of NG for a minute. I know. I was. I was definitely. I was definitely. Uh, we. I was. We were def I was definitely creeping it while I was at at that job. Uh, yeah. Before they had um the ability to actually make an account, if I recall. But no, definitely the before the ability to upload. Uh, yeah. Automatically. I started creeping uh, around the time Tom made uh, Samurai Asshole. I think it's around the time I started creeping on there. I, I might have found it before that. I remember fucking playing Teletubby Funland. <laughs> when he, yeah. But but I didn't really creep on the site until shortly after Samurai Asshole came on. And I didn't really join until I actually had made like, a game that was worth posting. And we're not going to talk about that game because it's kind of racist. So let's just move on. Jesus, Josh. <laughs> Oh my nice god, job, Josh! Yeah, Nicely yeah. done. Is it Bill Cosby hitting people with a camera while tempting them with pudding? Racist? Or I, I, I wish. I wish. <laughs> no. it's god damn. Team. So, Mind Chamber, you were or Jose, you were looking at Newgrounds while doing this animation job, and what do you think even brought you to that point? What what kind of animations or what did you see on Newgrounds that made it more fascinating than any of the oh Oof. than I, anything I, else? Uh, it was what I heard first. So I was working on this really lame uh, pigeon poop game where you were the pigeon <laughs> and you had to. It was absolutely lame. Hold on, hold and on. It, Filmmaker, animator, game mate. What are you? <laughs> well, what are the places? Well, no, I creative. actually was doing the art for it. Uh, I still wasn't programming. Um, still not probably ever going to program. But uh, doing that, we're well, doing that in uh, Shockwave and in the office. Somebody was playing something that had the Godzilla sound. And it just caught my ear. I'm like, what the hell is that? And then I heard like this really nice funky drum and bass right behind it. I'm like, what the hell? So I walk over and uh, someone was playing UFA. And oh, nice. I said, whoa. And I said, is that, is, is that a Shockwave game? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow. And I said, all right, good, play it. I want to see. And they just, it was as it was quick and snappy and it was funny and it was ridiculous. And then when they lost the, the freaking monster at the end, I would spin around and do the Godzilla noise. And I said, <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> well, I, like, explain, I, what I is like, UFA? Something what, like that. <laughs> we, <laughs> what is UFA? What is? UFA so, is a, a, a game that uh, Tom Fulp made where you had to, uh, you were a UFO and you had to um, beam up these little, uh, people and then throw them into a, a wood chipper and then <laughs> at, at, at the third <laughs> in the third stage there was this giant black monster with the huge eyes and um if you screwed up the monster would laser you and it would have the godzilla noise and that's what, and after that i was i i kept i kept i started scouring the site 
So that was... that, that's all it took. One game from Tom Falk just lured you in, and, and you decided, this is something I want to make, too. This looks amazing. Pretty much. Uh, oh, my God. I, and it was funny because, like, here we are. We were working on, like, Flash games, right? Or right, Shockwave games at the time. And when certain employees came in with their kids, they sat them down on a separate computer and <laughs> on Newgrounds. And I kept saying, well, we we need to see what this guy or well, whoever the, these people are doing because it's obviously it, it's good. Uh, but you know, I I was just you know I was an intern, so you know who cares what I have to say. So right, but uh, this was all before you could even submit your own content. So this was when Newgrounds was purely curated with yes. games. Yeah, and the, there was just yeah. a big market for that. And like a lot of yeah, people it, were making games like this, but there there was no single place to find them. Like. And making your own website back then was not as easy as it is now. Uh, you could maybe have a GeoCities page or something, but hosting it was just kind of a pain. Where just something about Newgrounds, even before the portal was there, people were finding it. Um, I think a lot of it was because we all kind of discovered Flash around the same time or Shockwave or whatever we were using. And we started like searching for sites that had stuff on it. And Newgrounds always came up as one of the top 10 in Alta Vista because we didn't use Google yet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or Yahoo. Yahoo. Woo! But yeah, because it was one of the first search results, then we all kind of like found stuff on there. Most of it was Tom's to start with, and then a couple things got added. And then they, once once he started showing other people's work, it just blew up because most like keep in mind, most people were only making a handful of games a year. And Tom made like three or four to start with. So he had like what was considered a huge collection of these fucking weird web games when it was all brand new so we we found that site and was like yeah we want to get ours on there and, and that's how it blew up so it's no surprise that everybody in that generation just found this one site just because also it's all because tom had just enough starter shit i think he was in the right place at the right time had the right base and it blew up and like we all found it and now we're all part of it to the point he had to make a portal and that's when i finally joined well, he didn't have to make a portal. He could have just thought he, he was did. top shit. You know, he, no, he, he was getting he didn't want to, hundreds he didn't of emails. He didn't want to upload shit anymore. Yeah, manually, he was getting hundreds so. of emails every day. Here's my game. You want to put it on? <laughs> and, and Tom is the kind of guy who he won't ghost anybody. He, he he has to answer them all. He's just that nice of a guy. So he was getting all these emails and had to answer them all. So I was like, nah, man, we got to do something. <laughs> that was the community. You give the community what the people want. That's just right, right. Out. How that happened? So, so Jose, your your animation background, yeah. um, you're an '80s kid like me. So clearly, a lot of what kept you in it was like the Saturday morning cartoon love, right? Absolutely. Um, a lot of that. That's actually why I went into it. Uh, when I when I finally said, okay, I guess I'll be doing this. I said, I obviously it's like all the corny uh, old anime drama, like Voltron and. And, and Robotech and stuff like that. And I wanted to tell stories, but I actually wanted to do it, you know, as film. But when they convinced me to do animation, that's the, exactly the first thing I thought about. Like, ah, you know, that's still one I wanted to. I always wanted to do that. So, it, it, you know, it worked out. At least in my head it did. Uh, yeah, tons of, what, Bionic 6? And uh, good Lord. <laughs> you can go on forever. <laughs> yeah, I can go on forever. Yeah, I, I used to... I remember I used to be like really bummed when it was like 12 o'clock and and like solid gold dance started popping up because I knew the cartoons were over. Dude, I lived near the Buffalo market and they would advertise another hour of cartoons. But then because of where I was, they fucking put Soul Train on instead of the last hour of cartoons. That was Uh, the most uh, devastating thing. (laughs) And Soul Train was the worst because it started with an animated train. So you thought you were getting a cartoon. Yeah, I was hyped. That train (laughs) train was dope. I got to tell you. Anyway, so yeah, your your big inspiration was like all the old eighties cartoons, which kind of leads me. But one of your big breakthrough on Newgrounds was Heroes of Cybertron, right? Like that oh, blew Lord. my mind at the time. That blew my so mind because like we weren't getting new Transformers cartoons. We weren't, and you made that, and like holy shit, this this is fucking mind blowing. We've we've got people making new Transformers cartoons, and that's that was what made me fall in love with you to begin with. That one oh, animation, but, yeah. Well, and, I mean, yeah, I. I'm st- what were we like about eleven years in, uh, eight Transformer movies now, and yeah. I'm still not happy with <laughs> what I've seen. So right. I'm hoping that someone brings brings what I see in my head to life one day because it's kind of a bummer. But yeah, that was fun, and um, 
That's actually one of the things on my roadmap is to redo that Transformers cartoon. No Hell way. Yeah. yeah. Yep, With everything yep. growing so old, I mean, you're talking about a cartoon that's back in like 2000, that was submitted in 2000s. Like, there's probably yeah. a lot that you would either want to redo or build off of, or oh my god, yeah. Try I actually re-enhance. was going to do it uh, live action, but I realized that maybe, maybe that console was uh, was right because I I still have like a severe uh stage fright with people uh when i when when you got like a whole bunch of people and like a light guy and people standing around you like all right what are we doing here it's 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 like scary i've done like maybe (laughs) (laughs) i've done like maybe three shorts and only two of them online and most of the time is only two or three people and i'm still like sitting there like ah ah so I think I, th- I was originally going to do this as a um, 80s style live action movie. And uh, basically what would Transformers look like if it came out in 90s 90- in 86. Uh, mm. And I, I hired one guy, very nice guy, very nice guy, but it just, he just wasn't nailing the lines. And I didn't really know how to kind of say, okay, that's good. That's good. But can you do it a little bit like this? And I, um, I said, I can't do this because I just, I can't, you know, I was like, all right, that's good enough, man. I'm tired of being out here. I feel like everybody's watching this guy. <laughs> My whole dream is falling apart right now. I yeah, had a vision like, for this. Mind. You're not really shooting it. You look like you're homeless. I met you at a Starbucks. Something's, something's wrong here. <laughs> it just doesn't feel right. I'm like, yeah, okay, let's get out of here. Not to mention like the, the scene I was doing was in a cemetery. So the owner drove by with a goon and like, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, we're just doing a quick scene or something. And. It was just like this uncomfortable situation. The guy just looked like he wanted to kill me, his his bodyguard or whatever. <laughs> oh my god! I was like, oh god, that's so stressful. I'm like, look, I, and then I realized, <laughs> I I'll go back and check. Apparently, uh, news reporters have been going there like a few months ago because he hadn't been taking care of the tombstones, and they've been reporting on neglect, and they and they kind of you know caught him on you know they put him on like you know shame on you kind of thing. So he's paranoid anybody someone walks in there with a camera, and I totally didn't realize that. So thank God that he even let us finish. Oh but <laughs> yeah, I was like, fuck this. I'm so, sorry. so how long did the animation take? Was it worth it just making it into an animation? Or? Oh yeah. I mean, it was I um it was just something I wanted to to that was always in the back of my head, even though it came out pretty bad. And I, I wanted it to be way more animated, but I was still working with a scanner. So it was like, like that Optimus Prime is like, he's like on a, on a page with like all his parts, like, like color forms, it's all separate pieces and I have to ink it. And then it was just a real pain in the ass. I'm ready. I'm ready to do that, to redo all that now. You still have all those papers, don't you? Huh? Do you still have all those papers? Yeah. Man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta post that sometime, man. That'd fucking be great. Yeah. Put them up for auction. Yeah, yeah. She, no, sell it as an sure. NFT. Scan it and NFT it. Yeah, I, I I'll tell you what though, I will do that if uh, if I if I ever not NFT it, but if um, thank you, don't NFT anything. No, if I get to kickstart, I'll 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 give those out to like the highest tier or something, uh, okay, and I'll sign them because yeah, mm-hmm. they've been they've been with me for what is it, twenty years, over twenty oh, years. Now. So Josh, what what do you think, Tom? Do you, Mind Chamber? Did you reach out to Tom or Josh? Do you think Tom reached out to Mind Chamber? How did that work? What do you? Um, that was a little before I started talking to Tom, so I wouldn't know. Ooh. So uh, Tom reached out to me about what was it? <sighs> Your Transformers cartoon. He's yes. A big yeah. fan. He's yeah, like, I, I, I was trying to remember. But then he reached out to me again, and I got confused. But he reached out to me the second time for the RoboCop one because he had to take it down. And I, oh I thought, yeah, she's like, I'm really sorry, but you know, we have to, and I was like, oh, that's fine. That's cool. why they had to take it down because it was like copyright or something. Yeah, they were. It was you know, it was a new world of Flash, and even though it was some wonky ass animation, they they thought I was like abusing their IP. <laughs> so dude, that's yeah. wild. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I I thought I I took it as a compliment. So it's it's good. That's cool. <laughs> it's so good that the uh, yeah. Yeah, that means the people that own the IP were like, dude, we can't let this exist. It's too good. It looks exactly like RoboCop. They're, gonna, they're not going to show up for the movie if this guy's just making bootlegs. <laughs> exactly. Like, well, you're on, you, did, you, did like a, you did like a trailer for like the miniseries on TV. Was that like a, a legit thing or was that just a fan thing? No, that was a legit thing. Um, 
the guys from Canada that were making that. Uh, I don't know if they did it because they wanted to shut me up because I was trolling the hell out of the forums because it was pretty bad. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but they're like, you know, we want to, we're going to be releasing this on VHS and we want to add the scene where he's deleting memories. And I'm like, okay. And like, uh, so we just want to have like extra stuff, you know, in one of the windows. So can you just make a cartoon? So it wasn't going to be shown in full because if you recall, there was a really cool little robot like uh, cartoon that they were playing uh, from someone else that did like a really good job of making it. It was, it was uh, CG, but cell shaded. Uh, I feel bad not remembering. But anyway, um, so it wasn't going to like be shown that long but it was going to be shown long enough that it was going to be part of like this uh, media net thing where it's he's deleting his memories so it's like okay and uh yeah they paid me and everything it was cool is that I your said, oh, yeah, first like uh independent animation job or uh let me think uh, was that before mike uh, mtv yeah i guess it was uh yeah more, more how, much did you, how much did you get paid back then for animation that was that that little clip was the most I got paid for, which was pretty insane. I got paid a grand for that. It was a Holy studio. They, sh- yeah, they throw money around like nothing. With, with inflation, that's like $6 million today. Dude, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should have asked them to pay you in Bitcoin. You'd be I know. <laughs> God damn it. Well, They'd be like, that's, what's that? <laughs> that's, really, that's really damn interesting. Tom reaches out to you. Okay, he sees your stuff. You, 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 you got good animations. And then he pays you a thousand. To make Peabot, right? Is that how it works? No, no, he didn't pay me that. My the that was the that was the, the Canadian studio that paid me a thousand. Tom, Tom didn't pay me a thousand. Tom paid Peabot. you two thousand. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you got you got um? Wait, hold on. You tell me it's only downhill since that that RoboCop. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, never, he's never made that much since ever. I, yeah i've never yeah the, the most i've been made was as a mailman so yeah, yeah it, it yeah. goes down yeah. pretty quick <laughs> so but, um shortly after that you you got hit up by tom to start working on uh well they had like a contest i guess to design the new pico was and it a contest i, can't I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if it was a contest but like you put out a call for some animators to or artists to reimagine pico right. and your design was clearly the favorite he reached out to you. Is that when you started working for New Grads officially, or were you guys working on the game for a while before you got like hired as a job? No, I, I, because I, I don't remember the, I don't remember if there was an like, actual contest, but I do remember seeing different clips, and he's like, uh, he was, I remember him posting like he liked all the designs he was, you know, that he got from the people he's worked with before. These, it was two artists that he had done games before with, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Zbarth, right? Yeah, and, that was one. Uh, and the one that he did with uh, Disorderly or Order. Yeah, that was Z- that was Z-Bark. Okay. So I just I just went ahead and did them on my own. I just I just I just I drew I drew them, I inked them, I scanned them, and then I sent them to him. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everyone should learn from your example and just, oh, and god, just don't. ink their drawing, scan it. Just have some respect for what Ryan uh, yeah. had to go through Put to bring the you the grind. You if you don't do if you don't do your robot day art that way, you can't win. Sorry, guys. Oh yeah, you should make that make that the rule. <laughs> I want to see you scan it. You have to take a video of yourself scanning. <laughs> Excuse me, what? <laughs> What's a scanner? God. Jeez, can so you even buy a scanner by itself now? I don't think so. I think I'd be a printer. The printer combo. Yeah. So wait, so t- Tom saw your designs of Pico, and then is that when he asked you to make something? F- of pico or is that when you started doing all the preloaders because remember all those preloaders i think either you did or someone was inspired by you did them and that those was were, later on yeah uh that was, was so what he did was he's like uh he, he got back to me he's like oh those those came out pretty good he's like uh pico needs to be a little younger though can you make him younger i'm like all right and i give it a shot and then he's like oh all right i like it so and then he said all right we'll move forward wasn't the uzi your idea yes yeah, so in, in the original game, he's got, like, whatever, an AK. The big rifle, know, yeah. A big old rifle. Big and old mine, rifle. Mind yeah. Chamber's like, nah, double Uzis. Becomes iconic. It's like, yeah. it's all. <laughs> it's been the definitive Pico since, for real. Character designer, animator, uh, once almost a film student. Fuck, Mind Chamber, pick a. <laughs> pick something. And that was just because it, it was a nod to Matrix, so I was. Uh, can't even like take too much credit for it. I was literally just trying to spoof Matrix with those two, and uh, it just kind of worked out. 
don't know. It kind of fits his character, I think. It does. It does. The Uzis I kind of get at this point. And double Uzis, it just it brings me back nostalgia. And I'm not even that old, but it, like when I was 13, seeing Pico Uzis is like mind blowing. It's just awesome. Yeah, that Pico's Unloaded nice. animation was fucking. It still stands up today. Like not a lot of old animations stand up to what the kids are making today, but that one still does for sure. No, oh, yeah. thanks. I I try to put you know my best uh, Hey Arnold style forward with that one over there. <laughs> so I mean, that's why it reminds me of when I look at it now. I just think of Hey Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> so at, at this point. Like Tom hit you up, you he's recognized your style that you've done for Pico. Your creative juices must have been like flowing at this point. So I mean, you you have animations out, you have a you have a bunch of art. What was what was next for you in Newgrounds? When did when did Peabot start becoming a thing? When did how were you approached about the bots, or did was that something else you also did on your own? More or less. Uh, I think what happened was, um, he. He hit up, who was it? I'm so bad with names. He hit up a really, really good artist that uh, does Meg Man really well. I, can anyone? Andrew Yo, Andrew everyone, Dickman. Uh, and, wait, what'd you just say? Andrew Dickman? Does that sound right? A- Andrew, Andrew Dick- Dickman. Andrew Dickman, yeah. And Rickman or Andy Dickman? Rickman. Andy <laughs> Dickman it was, it was Rickman? Andy Dick. It was Andy Dick. <laughs> Hundred percent, Andy. All right. Now, now, Josh, you're just fucking with it. What are you doing? Man? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to disrespect it. Did so they I have just... a Newgrounds account, or was it completely separate? No, he he had a Newgrounds account, and he had done some really nice uh, Mega Man uh, fan art and some fan uh, shorts. Really nice style. So he asked he asked him to um, to whip up uh, some Peabot, Peabot and A Bot, and uh, I didn't. I didn't like. I, it looked good. But I didn't think it fit, it fit Peabot's character, so I just took a shot, and I said, to, uh, "Like Tom, I, I think this, this. I think you should keep all the little nuances of of uh, ba, uh, Vincent from uh, Black Hole. I sh- you should keep that look in there because that's what makes Peabot like really cute. And um, you know, uh, Dickman did a good style, but he like changed the hat and changed the thing. I kept kind of Dickman's like." Uh, uh, body frame, but then I just changed him up to look more like, more like Vincent from the Black Hole, and but you know, gave him a bigger arm and so forth. With appendages, yeah, yeah. Can, can someone post well, Vincent here's... from the Black Hole in chat, please? I don't know what that looks. Like. <laughs> oh my god! How old yeah, are you these, these, these kids. Wait, Josh, you know what this. that is? Yes, it's an old eighties movie. It's, if you got Disney Plus, <laughs> watch it. <laughs> This right, Disney oh, Plus. Who subscribes to that? <laughs> yeah, look up Disney Plus. It should be there. All the way. Look the up Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. I gotta pay a, it, bucks it's, a it's an old ass movie, but it's a good movie. Uh, another character that we all we all loved from that one was Maximilian. Um, oh man, I've been I've been wanting to. Those old I movies had such good so robot bad. designs, man. You want to animate a character that only had like arm articulation? That should be yeah, too hard. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> He had he had no movement and he had like he had like a chiseled in ascot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he was awesome. That's, that's literally prototype Peabot right now. I'm looking at in chat. It's, yeah, that's I, totally what he's inspired like, by. What I like, what I like, what you did with it, Jose, was that you made Peabot seem personable, which was well, which I think is important, especially when people are making like flash cartoons or want to get Peabot involved. His shapes are pretty simplistic. I've seen mm-hmm. uh, Snail Pirate do an amazing animation of Peabot. You should check that out. That was for the Pico Day collab, which has a bunch of animators in it. And it's just Peabot coming together, and you really get to just see the shape. You did see that. That was badass. It is yeah. badass. And, and Peabot yeah. just like seems like a kind of like, I don't want to say like cool guy, but he's like, he's he's there. And I, he's I like friendly. I enjoy that he's there. He's like, he's he has friendly. a personality. You can go to his user page. He's very likable for a robot. A lot, that was a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the posts from Peabot, you got to give credit. The, the Stamper, Stamper looked yeah. at the drawings and he kind of just he just projected their personality. All of them have uh, at least one post that was written by Stamper, and uh, he did a great Those job. Those posts on their profiles are written by St- I bot, M bot, G yep. bot, A bot, F bot. F bot's a, a dead giveaway that it was Stamper. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah she talks with a lot of slang or yeah. a lot of anyway <laughs> so, so, so your, your a bot design I, I hope you guys aren't so young you don't get the a bot design because that's based on blaster from 
fucking Transformers. Just just post in chat. You get you gotta help. You gotta meet me halfway. I gotta I know what I'm looking at. Like, you know, okay, if, so someone send me a blaster reference, please. <laughs> if you don't know who Blaster from Transformers is, get the fuck out of here. Someone Damn send me a Transformer right. rest, uh, reference, please. <laughs> Someone posted Transformers. I think our our audience is a little too young for that. Corey might be the only other boomer. In it. No, he's not even a boomer though. No, nah, he's is bad. You guys are an extinct race. You realize that? Right? It's all good. Well, <laughs> we're dying. We're it's dying. not like we left you anything to work with. So. <laughs> oh my god. So the the love for robots that still holds true today. I would yes. say for you. Where, yeah, and that just came from Transformers and yeah. these other movies with these cool um, aesthetics. A little bit. Uh, one of them there was one. Well, there was one movie uh, in the early seventies that horrified me and kept with me to this day, and uh, that is um, uh, Saturn Thirteen with Farrah Fawcett. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a good movie. Saturn Thirteen. Saturn thir- can someone uh, Saturn, 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 Saturn we should have had a whole like group here ready to like on demand link me stuff that I'm not gonna understand like you guys who <laughs> just fun. like like clap snap your fingers and they'll pull it up for me well in Shit. that in, in just real real quick recap in that movie um uh some guy who was a criminal kills a mechanic let's say a maintenance guy who his job was to deliver uh, a servant, a prototype servant robot to this one base on Saturn 13, which I believe is one of the moons. And the robot uses uh, some, some type of synthetic uh, organic brain as its thinking mechanism. And so what he does is he plugs the robot straight to the back of his brain whenever he needs it to kind of learn quicker. You know, just like when you try to teach a, an, an arm at a car factory, he, if he wants the robot to understand quicker, he just plugs it right in. The problem was is that he he was having the hots for Farrah Fawcett, and he started looking at Farrah Fawcett, you know, all lickety smackety like with the connection still on. So the robot started getting hots for Farrah Fawcett, and then the robot decides that he wants to get rid of uh, the mechanic and Farrah Fawcett's man, and it becomes this horror movie, and it's it's traumatized me since forever. Oh yeah, that's it was a yeah, scary he, movie, man. That yeah, robot he, was um, freaky. And I mean, it looks a little goofy now because basically, it's you can tell it's a guy in a suit, but his arms are kind of really tight to his sides, and then they actually have like mechanical arms outside, and they kind of like swing like appendages. It looks a little, little wacky, but he has this really he's really huge, and he has this really tiny camera head. That's on a, like a little like a little gurney, a little tripod, and like so that is an actual mechanic. So it just the head like zooms in and pulls in and pulls back, and it's really creepy shit. It has two lights on his eyes. Oh my and, god, it know, looks cool though. Yeah, he so um you know I I'm mean, like to this day I, I still remember he, he killed their dog, <laughs> and that's just oh my <laughs> <head>. <laughs> I'll never forget the day he killed their dog. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I did was when I went home, I just just to kind of get out of my brain, I just kept drawing them over and over. See, I was going to ask that before we move on to anything more contemporary, because like you said, the film guys, oh, you're good at doing storyboards, you do animation. So in the beginning, beginning, like when you first started drawing, you know, it was drawing these robots and movies, drawing these things yeah. that freaked you out and fascinated you at the same time enough to yeah. be like, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah. That, um... That and um, a lot of old kaiju uh, cartoons like like Gamera and like Godzilla, but it wasn't Godzilla because these were bloody and I can't remember which ones they were. But I'd watch these weird old uh, 70s uh, kaiju films where like one would laser the other one and, and blood would come out of the costume and their arms would fall off. So I remember drawing that. Uh, in like after school session and they pulled my mom over and said that, you know, <laughs> something you might want to check up on this is what this is what little little jose's drawing so <laughs> this isn't what we call normal <laughs> we're just letting you know this like, yeah and this like, is like, this is preschool shooting culture so they must have been very concerned <laughs> yeah just a bit oh man i bet <laughs> But it turns out you just wanted to do film. It wasn't about the blood. It wasn't about filming people that you're killing. It's just, it's just cool. <laughs> yeah, to no, draw. I was, yeah, I was, yeah, that, you know, and I drew the fun stuff too. I drew, you know, CP3PO. I drew a lot. R2D2 was, a, was another fun one when I was younger. 
So, yeah, uh, I've always been fascinated by, by robots and mechanics and the idea of a, of a ghost in a shell has always been a fascinating concept. Which Why that, did you go to school your... to be a fucking robotics like <laughs> person? Because like, I'm, I'm an don't, engineer. I don't, I'm not smart enough. I, I know I don't. I don't like math. So Absolutely. that goes to the shell idea, though. Like that was what you kind of based your mind chamber character on, right? No, uh, actually, uh, it's funny because I brought I, I I put the the statue next to me because I didn't know we were doing. Uh, I, th- I wasn't sure if we were doing video or not, but the the inspiration for the mind came uh, mind chamber design is actually transmutate from Beast Wars. Oh, okay. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah, background, yeah, his, oh, ba- yeah. his his character is kind of a Ghost in the Shell character, right? Like, oh yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's the the whole thing. The Mind Chamber is like this unit that is uses like specific crystals to record conscience. So it's yeah, yeah. All right, how many animations have you done that describe your persona, your Mind Chamber? Uh, actually, I just every time I'm about to do it, something changes in my life. I have yet the only thing I have. And I could thank I could thank Hans if he's on here. Is that he gave me uh, w- one of the Pico days? He gave me this little journal, and he's like, "It's time for you to stop talking about my chairman and start writing about him." And damn, pretty much. And I was like, "My man." And yeah, I I got the first ten minutes completely staged out, and all the dialogue done, and the rest is blocked out, and it's all written. So it's gonna happen. I just uh, that's what I needed to take a change course in my life and get started on that. Damn, Almighty Hans, biggest Chad. Everyone, everyone, at Almighty Hans and tell them Jose <laughs> says thank you. If you, I think he's still in the the server. And, and, tell, well, tell and another anyway. shout out to uh, the person who's let me have a second chance in my life is my girl, and she's actually listening right now. Thank you, Eloquent. Yes. Love you, baby. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta talk about that. We gotta talk about that in a minute because we we want to get into that big time. Um, mm-hmm. But while we're at it, uh, one thing we didn't touch on while you were with Newgrounds, you did a lot of collaborations. You'd be at like animation collabs or games. Um, maybe talk about that experience a little bit. Uh, let's talk about Newgrounds Rumble. Like, how did that come about? Um, yeah, I feel like Negative would probably be able to explain that better. I I believe Negative came to me and said you want you want to make something. But uh, if that's the case, I can't remember if it was him or I. But yeah, he's like, you want to work with something? I'm like, yeah, sure. And I, he's like, I think about making a little, a little Flash game that kind of works like uh, Smash. I was like, all right. I said, well, I got tons of characters that, that could be used, reused. So I re- you know, and I said, and then we could just, you know, I could jumpstart onto the next ones. So like I pretty much had Pico done because I had the Pico 2 sprites. And I had Peabot done because of that game that uh, Fish and I were supposed to do. Remember yeah. that one? And then, um, uh, yeah. so, I, and then I, just, I just went in deep. That was fun as hell. I, yeah, I was exactly that. That felt good. I like that. that. I like that game. That, that was something you did a lot of. You had um, a lot of like old animations and shit that that you had, and mm-hmm. then they got turned into games. Like when we did Alloy Arena, you had all that done because you were working on a GBA game. And yes. I, I remember you you were telling me about it. You sent me some examples of what you thought it would be. And you just sent me all these flash files. And we just made, I just turned it into a game. Like It was super yeah, dope. Was awesome. But my favorite one was the Red Baron one. You had all the sprites for Red Baron himself. And we did like a contest. Remember this? We did like a contest and people yeah. just submitted characters. They, didn't, they, they could be anything. There was no rhyme or reason what these characters were going to be. And we had like a... On a, it was all on a blog, but we had, we did like a judging contest, and I pretended to be like Simon Cowell from a fucking. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> so I'm like, I, me and me and my chamber are like judging nicely, and my fucking fake persona, is Simon Cowell, I'm talking shit about. It, <laughs> it was fucking great, <laughs> but like that game was so dope how it came out because like it just you came up with like a background for it, used all this reused art and all these weird fucking submissions you got, and it was so good. <laughs> That was fun. Yeah, that was um uh Red Baron is is actually a design that was made by one of my uh, uh friends from school. They had made an RPG uh like a, a point and click RPG uh in Shockwave. And so pretty much all we were able to use back then. And uh it was neat, but it was like pretty much it wouldn't it was wasn't playable on the computers at the time and stuff like that. We just had it so we just kind of we made it and it was he was in computer class, so that was his final project. And then we all had copies, and and I had all the art. Oh, and the art was uh, once again that was that was done on paper. 
Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was done. On, yeah. So Red Baron was done on paper. And I remember when I, I was like, man, there's a lot of animations for this. And so I talked to them. I'm like, yo, you, you mind if I, uh, you know, run with this character? Like, yeah, go for it. And he loves what happened with it. And uh, yeah. And uh, who knows? Maybe there might be another Baron. Uh, we'll see. Bye. When did you stop drawing on paper for animation? Like, when did that finally happen? I feel bad for you. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, let me see. Did I have so many, like, so many uh, empty, There's like empty, empty uh, pads here because I don't use them anymore. <laughs> uh, I would say it have to be. It had to be once I got once I got my Intuos three. It was it was a wrap. Once ah, I finally figured out how to use it and then I was comfortable with it. Uh, I still had, like I said, I still had like a piece of paper taped over it so I can get that friction. And yeah, so. What are you drawing on these days? Uh, right got, around got, Pico 2. Pico 2 was when it, Pico when two? it officially right. stopped. Yeah. You got a Syntec now? Are you drawing on something better now? Yeah, a little. I got a little 13 inch here. Uh, this job. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. You know, every time I, if I don't use it, uh, you know, if I go use the bathroom for some reason, it just stops recognizing the stylus. But yeah, aside from that, it's just fine. Let me try not taking the stylus. Oh, the price the garbage. Bathroom. Yeah, exactly. I just keep <laughs> throwing pen at it from the bathroom to make sure it keeps you know, registering. Here's a question uh, a lot of artists can probably relate to. Mind Chamber, what's the longest you've gone without doing art? Like taking a hiatus from it? Uh, four years? Five? Four years. Yeah. yeah. Everyone falls off the wagon. He gets back on it hard. eventually. And well, you know what's a... surprising? You know what's surprising about your personality, Jose? Is that you you understand all these lores and you you, you want to give characters backgrounds or personalities. Like you said, Stamper did a great job with the bots. It's, you notice like everyone's got kind of these stories that they want to tell with their characters. And I'm surprised it doesn't like drive you to want to draw more. Obviously, you have your life got in the way, you know, for mm-hmm. whatever reasons. Everyone grows up or has to do something else and a lot of people don't work the postal service just because it's fun, you know? <laughs> it sure ain't. So, it sure ain't. It's glad to see you talking about art again. And uh, something I know Josh really wanted to bring up is that you don't work for the postal service anymore? No, we that's got a right. chamber renaissance, baby. He's back. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I, I'm going to get this guy's name wrong. So I'm going to look him up real quick. Uh, you joined at the wrong time, though, because uh, OnlyFans bans NSFW content now. Yeah, really you fucked up. You, you missed. Yeah, I ain't ready for that. I mean, maybe Crinkles is, but that that's not my thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Alien snatch attack. Oh, yeah. speaking of which, that's uh, officially, <laughs> it's officially gone now. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I, I was reading it, and you know, as you get older, you know, things that you kind of just do uh, and shrug your shoulders on kind of just lingers in your head when someone's like, Oh my god, I remember playing this when I was six. I'm like, Okay, I can't. That's it. No, I was six. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Yeah, let's take this off. Uh, <laughs> like, Tom, do you mind? I'm publishing this. He's like, I'm just going to delete it. I'm like, All right, that's good. Yeah. But um, there was a, a phrase by, uh, I hate not uh, saying the name, Naval. Rot, rotisnik uh, like this is the entrepreneur you were, you were yes talking about but what he said was uh he said that uh everyone has two lives and you only realize you're on the second one when you realize you only have one and i thought yeah that, that kind of hit me so like you i know i'm saying it wrong so i almost kind of relate i kind of want to i kind of want to look him up now because I'm, I'm probably butchering his phrase hold on every man has two lives and the second starts when he realizes he just has one. And I get, yeah, that's exactly right. So I have things I want to finish. And the one thing about having the job, like I was very, listen, it's a good paying job. And I was very grateful to have it when I couldn't get uh, contract work anymore and couldn't get freelance work. But it got, it got to the point where it wouldn't allow me to art at all. And that's where I drew the line. Like, it, you know, I just... That was the same way when I, I actually originally went to um, before and I went to uh, Fordham Preparatory School, like like that fucking Dead Poets Society type of school, all all kid, all boys and suits and stuff, and art was like not allowed, and that was just like I couldn't I couldn't even finish that school. And it's one thing when you can say, oh well, you got to do one thing, and you got a little time for yourself to do the art. But this job got to the point where they would it wouldn't let me do it at all, and that's when I just that's that was. 
it's my person. I, I'm not anything without this. So I feel like I was losing myself. So you I were just, just said, you were right. just chamber without the mind. Just mind exactly. Chamber. Yeah. Just an empty chamber. chamber so, pot. That's, that's really sad. Actually. Yeah. I mean, cause I actually, you know, the ad said part time, so, you know, and then I, I went there and I, I did, you know, the, I did their tests and I, and all that stuff. And then like a weekend orientation is like, look, uh, you're going to be working 50 hours a week, and, uh, six days a week. If you don't like it, there's the door. And you're like, oh, my uh, God. Yeah. You're like, OK, well, I'll, I'll I'll stick to it, you know, and and it got better for a second. I, I did like maybe two little collabs and I barely did that flash game with Goldfish. And, and and then it just went downhill once COVID hit. A lot of these older guys who have like a bazillion years under their belt decide, I'm just going to cash that in and not come to work. And it was just, it's my, my girl right now, she's she's doing a route and a half plus all the packages because there's no one there. It's empty. And oh, and, and no, one, no one wants to work. It's a hard job. But, you know, and I, I, yeah, I was like, all right. I think I proved myself. I think I'm going to give this another shot. Worst right. case scenario, I'll, I'll do DoorDash. <laughs> <laughs> this this podcast is sponsored by DoorDash. Use the yeah. code NGP food for 10% off. Well, the, the <laughs> ecosystem might have changed, obviously, because back in the Wild West, you were getting sponsored by Newgrounds just to make a game, like you get paid to do things for Newgrounds. And right. then nowadays, a lot of it has changed, but they're is a huge open market for indie games or, in, or indie uh, artists. A lot of people accept commissions. Cube Sona, uh, who's a Newgrounds artist, he runs a very successful Patreon, gets tons of commissions. I'm not going to say he's fucking filthy, but he lives moderately well. You know, like there's, there's going to be no real way of comparing it to how much money you're making at the post office, but they were forcing you to do 50, 60 hours. Now, exactly. yeah. Now it's more on your time. It might feel stressful because you're taking something that you love and turning it into a job. But there's a lot of avenues for it nowadays, and especially because of your connection, your deep rooted, deeply rooted connections to Newgrounds. I, I do not doubt you can find funding or some means of navigating today's Internet culture to your benefit to be able to do what you love once again, because everyone would kill for a second Newgrounds Rumble or just some some new designs from you, just art from you in general. There's a, a lot of. A lot of safer work Patreons too. That sure. Do well, you don't you don't have to sell out and draw robo titties unless you want to. I mean, and I, I I don't mean to call it selling out. I don't mean to call it selling out. I'm sorry. I I mean. No, it's fine. You don't I have mean, to draw robo titties or do stuff you're uncomfortable with just to make it in today's market. Is what I'm saying. Well, that's kind of like the hope. If I, you know, like I I said, you know, I pretty much ne- I've always had these ideas of these stories that I've wanted to do. And I've really never acted on them because I like, well, first I need to prove myself and do work, other people's work. One thing with Newgrounds characters, I, I do feel like a connection to them. So it doesn't feel that way at all. It feels like I'm working with characters that I have fathered, I guess, if you want to say. So it feels good. It feels natural. But I really do want to get to that point, you know, where I can just uh, just tell my stories and, and, and people want to see that. And that'd be pretty awesome. You know, that's why I'm going to give it a shot. If it doesn't work, like, you know, like I said, Uber Eats, DoorDash. <laughs> hey, um, I got a David Sosa that wants to speak. Uh, is that, is that, a, is that I don't know who David Sosa is. Are we landing a random on David Sosa? Yeah, we, we won't do that. No. So, okay, sorry, David Sosa. <laughs> we'll sorry, wait until the end. We'll wait yeah. until the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so going forward here, like, what what is it exactly you kind of want to do? Like, I know you want to tell your stories, but like, how do you see this going down? You want to just like draw, stream, have like a, a, an audience follow you while you work, or you want to just like make things, put them out, and hopefully people buy them. Like, what's your goal in moving forward in this new life? Well, okay, uh, let's see. So I do. I actually, you know, I keep I, I keep bothering you, and I bother Sabrina because she seems like she's she's she really yes whole- yes. Yeah, Father Sabrina. Sabrina, fantastic, everyone. She's the yeah. most helpful person Everybody when it comes to being an independent <laughs> artist. She'll she'll tell you how to, uh, where to buy your merch, what you got to do to sell it, what's the best means and routes of selling your merch as an artist. She will help a lot. I fucking love Sabtastic. She's yeah, awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. So yeah, I'm gonna bother her and, and ask her which the which you know which ones you think is the best 
uh, because, uh, you know, which one you think would work for me? Uh, I have tons of art that I think would work pretty well as merch. So I'll be playing around with Redbubble and like until that makes me, uh, you know, something. If it does, if it doesn't, it's fine. But if it does, then I'll, I'll probably move it on to my house and just have you know, have inventory here and just sell from here so I can. Well, you, you got connections in the United States Postal Service. I'm just saying, I'm not saying pull any <laughs> strings or anything, but yeah, I, you know. I doubt I have that kind of price. <laughs> yeah, they probably burn my stuff the way I like. <laughs> personally, personally, I think you should start off selling stickers like through your own like means. You can just mail okay. stickers and like you could make it as a way of kickstarting off like your kind of little art career sure. or your your need to be an independent artist like that you would know, be a, a cool little start for you yeah definitely well I, I i do plan on doing some more uh i plan on re- doing it in my style I, uh you know the pico characters and stuff like that i do plan on doing more stickers because actually people have asked me for them you know just one or two people but who knows maybe there's other people that would want it that just haven't asked so there I'm is a, that, there's a uh, small community that's really into pico right now i don't know if you've heard of it yeah. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm planning to do that. I I, I actually spoke with Tom. He, he's uh, letting me uh, print like a small run of the Pico characters, 3D print them, and uh, just gonna sell those. And uh, if 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 some type of in manufacturing deal comes through with that, then that's then then Tom's in on it, and and then it you know gets a little bigger. Hopefully, maybe. I think, Start small. Blow, I think those will sell out fast because like Newgrounds collectibles are fucking hot right now. Yeah. Um, okay. I think a Carter, Sterling, a certain Carter, game. Carter Sterling will buy them all himself. I guarantee Yeah. You. Listen, I, <laughs> prop, I will say this right now. Absolute props to Ninja Muffin, Quiet Sprite, uh, and uh, Damon. Phantom Harris. Arcade and Phantom Evil Arcade. Skater. Yeah. They, those, those, those guys single-handedly me, single-handedly Pulled this old robot out of its garage. They're the nice. ones. <laughs> <laughs> I like that analogy. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones that dusted my ass off, threw in a few uh, fresh set of batteries, and got me amped. Is that because? Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was done. I, I really did. I was mentally giving up. And uh, then all of a sudden, they made this amazing game that just just pulled my dusty ass art out of the out of the attic and gave it new life, man. So props to them, so- man. On that Thank note, you. I got a, I got a question for the chat. Who would be willing to become a supporter of Mind Chamber financially to have oh him God. make a fucking FNF mod? Who who would pay? Make for an that? FNF. He doesn't want to make an FNF mod. Yes, he does. That's yeah, not the first thing he wants to do out of retirement. Come I didn't on. say the first thing. I, I do actually. I do, but I want to do it with um with Alloy. Yeah. Oh, that'd be nice. That would be And nice. um I actually have a specific song made by your boy Spader. Made by your boy. <laughs> made what? by your boy Spader. Spader. Spader, Nick. Spader. I am such a bad reader, man. It's Spa- <laughs> he hates it when we call him Spadeezer, but we do it anyway. <laughs> Spadeezer got some badass songs and I've been oh, playing he said it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> I've been listening to a few of them over and over. And I'm like, oh, my God, this would be perfect. Oh, yeah. He's a great. So, he's a great. Uh, when he hears this, he's going to fucking be marking out hard because you said that. I know where he <laughs> lives, too, by the way. So yeah, uh, that's, cre- that's creepy. Leverage. That's fucking creepy. It's not creepy. He invited me over. I'm like a vampire. You have to invite me <laughs> in to your house. <laughs> don't, don't do that. People. Don't do that. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, I know what you bring to the chamber, mine chamber. Chamber, what do you bring to the table? I said, what do you bring to the chamber? That's awesome. <laughs> I, I know what you bring to the table, my, my though. Table. It's it's a lot of that nostalgia for old new ground, old new grounds type <laughs> content. It, it's a lot of robot, which you don't necessarily get a lot of. I follow a lot of art on Twitter, new grounds. You don't get too many people who are as great as coming up with robot designs. So I th- I think anything done in your style where you're making either the contemporary Newgrounds cast, like even FNF as robots would be fucking just cool to see. Like even in, on a, as a merchandising scheme, like there's a lot you bring that to the table, fun. which is why it's surprising to see you just now coming out of retirement. I'm, I know <laughs> and Bacon's saying Post Boy does robots. He does too. He's, he's But it's so few and far between where I see them really shine. Yeah, there's some badass robot designers out there. I, I, but I, I think I, I bring some imperfection to it that pulls it. Like it, there's a, I believe 
I mean, if I had to like critique my own stuff because I don't draw straight. So I have like this kind of crunchy, like ghetto style that it, cause there are all these guys here. I could see a whole bunch of people already. Uh, let's see. Um, no, I ain't going to call anybody out. Wait, you said ghetto style. There's a lot of amazing style. artists out here that just got this perfect, beautiful stroke. Um, but I, yeah. I, I bring that broken arm style that, that just can't be done. <laughs> you bring you bring that urban style. That's the first thing I thought when I was looking through your old art. I was like, oh, this is this this is really pop culture-y, urban. Yeah, it's, that's it's, street it's art. Gritty. It makes you think of like street art. Well, thank you. Like I spray, that. you could sp- you should spray it with a spray can, like that, <laughs> almost graffiti. Like it's, it, I'm looking for more adjectives because I hate saying urban every time I see something that's that's urban because there's got to be a better <laughs> word for it. <laughs> but that's that's what you remind me of, like that sense of like of of just city style in in some way. Thanks. It, well. It, 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 and from the Bronx, so I'm glad. I'm glad I hope that. I hope working for the the postal service has indulged your your ghetto style has indulged your senses. <laughs> I'd imagine oh, no, people it's fight it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, I think it's ignited it just a bit. I I still I still work. Uh, you know, I live in Allentown, and it's it's literally trapped in time. If you go into Center City, Allentown, it is 1986 South Bronx all day every day. So it is ghetto tastic. If I need, if I feel like I'm losing a touch of myself, man, I just walk out there with a twenty dollar bill sticking out of my pocket, and it all comes back to me. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, I do miss. Like I said, I do miss drawing uh, more. I didn't think I did, and then all of a sudden, I just really started missing it. So you'll see some more stuff, hopefully. I would like well, to definitely. see you actually. You know what's up? fucking genius idea you should remake preloaders you should make uh you should make preloaders make them cool again like, just they'll, just they'll, as gifs just as little gifs people would eat them flash up. on the screen for two seconds though no 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 not not like like do it as an animated gif like a fake loader bar you know what i mean like just how they used to be back in the day like that would be, be sick to see it again like fnf that, that would... imagine boyfriend from fnf in a preloader you know what i mean and just just make the loader bar um like fake just make it a gif like, that'd be sick that would sell them as nfts yeah. i mean I, I i there was uh what was it the i uh was it fnf uh no what was the saturday morning cartoons with the with the commercial bumpers i, I oh, thought that, that was fantastic. that was, that was a, yeah that was a summer jam that was summer great. jam with the commercial i mean i'm sure no one here really knows about those commercial bumpers right those that that's will we will be back after these messages yeah, hell yeah shit. I was well, there's, there's, there was bumpers. You're talking about the jam, right? That just, yeah, that just yeah, happened. The one that yeah, those bumpers go down. I don't know. Those bumpers were hella tight. Those those were actually made put a smile on my face between the animations. The amount of effort that. that was put in a lot of them to be creative. Like, you would see chat just go wild over it. You'd be like, oh, that's, that was actually really cool. And it's just like a five-second animation. It's, yeah, it's great. And I used it, to love those. Those are like the Transformer bumpers were like my favorite. I love them. Transformers Jeez. return out these should... messages. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. You should and see if you can't message. <laughs> you should see if you can't message Tom, pull some levers, uh, force him to commission you to make a new grounds background <laughs> for, the, for the wall art. <laughs> Poor Tom. I, I don't want to put it. I don't want to put it on. Oh my but God. I, I yeah. Put... You're not pushy at all, man. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I would do it on my own. If there's more collapse, uh, now that I have a little more time, I'll definitely add a fresh one instead of looking through my preloaders to. To, to join so uh yeah if there's another if you guys do another saturday morning cartoon bumpers I, i'll be on i'll be all over that Hell that's, yeah. a, that's a that's a really fun collab it's gonna be crazy seeing you back in the animator pool just yeah. back in the community They're like there's a mind chamber there he goes there's that animation <laughs> like it's gonna be sweet i'm gonna enjoy it you're gonna get front paged a lot hopefully Hell yeah yeah we'll see do you have a lot of art lined up uh i do but most of it's for games but yeah i do have uh i'll be doing a lot of little short animations not many though i actually have two really long ones that um that are old that i kind of want to finish so i'm hoping like all right, i'll do like a couple of clips of it and see if i can get people to help me finish it we'll see about that uh another thing i had i decided to do because i i do want to do actually alloy episodes but uh what was it uh Sterling, uh, what's his first name? What is he? Carter MS. Sterling. Carter. Carter Sterling. Perfect. He 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 actually put out a poll on Twitter that asked people like, "What do you feel about longer cartoons, shorter cartoons?" 
and people would prefer to have just action pack, short cartoon, three minutes, boom, done. Yep. And I'm like, okay. So what I'm going to do is I think this would work out better for me as well is that I will, if I do have, uh, I do have like five outlines for Alloy and I'll do the first one as a comic and then I'll take one of the scenes and animate it and then just redirect to the comic. So that way, that way you get a little bit, a little bit of best of both worlds. You have something in your hands that's, that you can, you know, keep forever. And then you, you got to see all the action in a three minutes and then it doesn't kill me it doesn't destroy me i don't because you know i love happy harry but i, I don't know how he does it man it's five minute cartoons <laughs> take him 10 years and it's like yeah see that's I, another I, guy I, though that's figured out how to do the the patron model he, like you should probably bug him too oh, okay yeah all right good i, I figured he just did like commission work on uh, on the side and no he, like, he wow. finally gave it he, he's a guy like you where he's like oh, i don't i don't, don't want to beg for money from anybody no that, that, that doesn't sound right <laughs> But then he, he finally gave in and started. I think he's doing Patreon. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's working out for him pretty well. And Good. I, I think he'll do right on that model or Substack or something in that vein. I think it'd be fine. There's a lot of stuff you could do too. Talk about that alloy thing. Like, imagine this: you, you get the episodes out, right? Mm-hmm. And you fucking sell the original comics to like the top bidder. Like, how much money are you gonna get? Come on. Plus, it's a God cool damn, artifact. Gosh. <laughs> it's a cool artifact to have out in the NG wild. Like people will well, fight I, for it. Baby ever, steps. Jesus if I God. ever, uh, if I ever decide that I need to, if I want to make the whole episode, then I might kickstart it. And I don't have many good ones, but I still have a, a few dozen cells of alloy that I've had now for probably mm, in four years. It'll be thirty years that I've had them. So, God damn! Yeah, yeah. So they, I'd say they'd, they'd be they'd, they're pretty priceless to me. I've given quite a few to a lot of really cool fans. Uh, Adam Butterline, who actually has the original prototype of the alloy toy, he, he fixed it and he actually made resin copies of it. He did a great job. Uh, he's got some of the, some of my nice ones, and then I have one where someone uh, texted me this long this long story about how he loved alloy and stuff like that, and I gave him I gave him the original. Like the, the original, um, the starter cells, like the ones that have like the background to them and stuff like that. Oh, but nice. I still have a lot of the roughs. So, yeah. So Damn. I would do oh, that. Wow. I think that'd be cool. Can't, can't keep everything forever. Oh, no. There's such a collector's market for new grounds right now. Like ever since the Tank Man toys came back on the market, it's people crazy. trying to find all this old. Have you been following the fucking hunt for the goddamn Newgrounds thong? Oh my god, that's out of control. <laughs> that's hilarious. Dude, shout out to, uh, I think, Milky A's, MZZA, Art, Milky Possum. They all brought the Newgrounds thong to everyone's attention. Now people are buying it. <laughs> I, think, I think Droid, Annoying Droid even picked one up. Yeah, weird. that's what I get hilarious. For him, but, you know. There's, there's somewhere out there, there's... I'm, I, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't we used to have fucking baby clothes at one time? Like they're up yeah, there. We, find, find them, yeah, guys. Tom, find them. <laughs> yeah, Tom squeezed that all the artwork through the cafe <laughs> press and just hit go. So you, you, know, you had it on like you know bugs, maternity dresses, and <laughs> maternity dresses. <laughs> so specific. But, yeah. Oh man, I even like I'm because I like I said I I didn't know that I thought at first that we were going to do like a, a video one, so I actually wore the um what you call it the good dad and me and i saw that one of them went on like ebay for like almost 200 bucks i was like that's right. so ridiculous that's so crazy so yeah i thought uh wow man you never know what's gonna hit you never know you know but once again this all goes back to brian and funky man gotta give gotta give props those kids yeah. did a good job we yeah any now. more games from you mind chamber uh just kickstart new grounds rumble 2 already <laughs> All right, no big deal. You're just back out of retirement. Let's make a whole ass game. Come on. Yeah. Almost, almost done. Almost done re- redesigning the dock. I'll let you know about that. Um, <laughs> All right. All so right. Uh, I got, I got a programmer who's definitely excited to do it. Negative one is not going to do it, but he's definitely going to be like on as a consultant, and um, just got to figure out the business aspect of it because we we want to make sure that everyone gets paid you know, for their characters, unlike the other one where we kind of just like use everyone's art. So we want to be able to get, you know, get everybody royalties. So that needs to be worked out too. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I can say right now that I'm working on it. Is it going to happen? Don't know yet. Are there people that want to work on it? Yes. So that's as far as I can say. But uh, yeah, I'm excited about that too. Hell yeah. uh, it's weird because I've seen, yeah. I've seen hype for Newgrounds Rumble 2 for like, 
I think like months now for like over over eight months now. I think I've seen a lot of hype for Newgrounds Rumble too because there was I think X Corpse Alien was trying to get together a way to to make it again, and then a lot of I've I've heard music for Newgrounds Rumble too, like the imaginary version. I don't even know if that was a real thing, but it seemed like at one point <laughs> someone was trying to make it. Like without you and I, I was, <laughs> I was, I was kind of weirded out by it because you don't just take someone else's idea and branch off of it. But as a tribute, maybe it wouldn't have been so bad. But there's, yeah, I there's mean, always been a lot of hate a, for it. If they do it as a fan thing. It's fine, but it won't be called New Grounds Rumble Two, so it's fine. Well, if they oh. want to say two, no, I won't. It won't. No. Oh, it's gonna be called Beat 'Em Up Boys. It's gonna be called New Grounds Rumble Four, and everybody's gonna wonder where the other ones are. <laughs> you gotta buy the sell sheets to to play New Grounds Rumble Four. It's all on paper. <laughs> or New Grounds Rumble Two or Three. Oh my God! Yeah. You gotta roll a die. Yeah, you gotta roll the die. Yeah. <laughs> Runs on the imagination engine. Jesus Christ! Well, so what's your dream project while you're while you're? doing all this stuff like it say everything money's not a problem what's the dream project my, uh, my chamber of the movie hell yeah my chamber of the movie yeah it's wait, uh, wait, like wait. i said I, I have 10 minutes of it completely uh written and the rest is blocked out but it's 90 minutes long i've changed the, the ending like at least 15 times now uh but i think uh, I'm, oh my I'm God. happy with this ending finally and uh yeah Mind shaping the movie, man. That's, Wait, let that's... me guess. This ending, he quits his job at the postal service. Pretty yeah, much, yeah. He just, <laughs> he just stomps in there, <laughs> leaving blows the it up, just throws the hat in, and then yeah, launches a missile. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> hey, what's the roster for the for the new New Grounds Rumble look like? Are there gonna be new characters? Or is it just gonna be rehash? No, it's gonna, gonna be it's, it's gonna be new characters, uh, and there's characters that I want, and there's characters that I hope I could get, but. Since I haven't really approached anyone yet because we haven't gotten to even like a, a workable, we haven't done anything. Yet, it's just papers at this point. I, I would like to double. I would like to double the roster. So that's all I could say. And hopefully everyone's on board. I know I'm gonna have to redesign Picanjo because I know he absolutely hates the way I designed him. So that's cool. Have you and seen I'll, all the fan art coming out though of him? Like they, of they the, it's of always the chamber, either or? well, it's either your your version or his version, and it goes back and forth like a tug of war until people are like, "Oh, that's the butt chamber version." <laughs> like people know for a minute. Is butt chamber in it? your version? <laughs> Is butt chamber? I love it, man. I got I'm getting hate from people who weren't even live when when Rumble was created. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's it's funny. I, it's cool. I get it. It um the the thing was when I designed Bacondro, I just wanted him to look. Like if he was part of the Pico Two people, so if he like, so he kind of fit that style. I knew he was more of like a, he was more like a you know cloud looking design before, and I I just wanted him to fit. Also, I was looking at the the logo that he uses, which is just a circle with like flamey hair in the back. So that's why my hair was towards the back. I was trying to fit that style, not because I was trying to make him look bald. Which is kind of what <laughs> say. But uh, yeah, I, I would absolutely redesign it, and I would pass it by him, and make sure that he likes the way it looks first. Oh uh, man, he only speaks well, in Leet speak though. So <laughs> yeah, I know I have to put it through a translator, but I, I still can't. <laughs> Is a translator for it? No, there's not. I'm sure there is, but I'm just kidding. That'd be funny. Lead speed yeah. translator specifically for Pecan Joe. That's a game <laughs> idea right there. There you go. There you go. There but go. yeah, that, that, that's another. That and I absolutely, uh, this could happen like sooner than later. Uh, Alloy Arena 2. Ooh. Yeah. Who, but who's going to work on that with you? Yeah, my programmer is being a little punk. It's just taking forever. <laughs> making, what? Is uh, your programmer Josh? Wife. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Does he have a family about, and like a about, podcast? Here, here's the deal. How about everybody in in the podcast community that's listening to this, either now or recorded, uh, send Tom Fault a, a PM and say, "Hey, let Psycho Goldfish work on Alloy for like a year and still pay him, and then we'll." Oh get my god! <laughs> yeah, let's make it happen, <laughs> dude. Imagine if the Kickstarter took off and then Josh just left Newgrounds Please. to make fucking Alloy Arena too. Oh man, I, I, I don't know if I could do that. Tom would cry. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be like, yeah. no. He's like, he'd be like, I'll make it, Josh. You stay, and protect new ground. I think, I think, I think little Jim might cry more because, like, there's a, there's a lot for one person to do. Oh yeah, man. yeah. No, I don't, I don't envy you, man. You and Jim yeah. have like are holding up some serious pillars on that crumbling city over there. Yeah, but like hey, the, 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 dream, the, the dream, the yeah. dream is like if I if I could work two out of five days on 
like projects like that. I mean, that would be amazing. And I've talked to Tom about that. It's not out of the realm of possibility. So we'll see how it goes. I definitely yeah. do want to revisit Mind Chamber. I want to revisit the Alloy. Alloy's like one of those guys, like that's Mind Chamber's creation, but like like he feels about Pico. I, I, I feel a little bit of ownership. Like I kind of brought him to life a little bit. Like I want that's to do cool. more. I really want to do more with him. I can love that little guy. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a fun little. Yeah, well, you know, you let me know, man. Uh, it would I quit be. my job, so let's do this. All right, I'll quit mine. <laughs> quit mine tomorrow. We'll get her. Let's go. Beautiful. <laughs> I'll, and I'll put in an application. I have no no programming experience. Uh, right Zin, now. Zin, I'm also not gonna have time to work on this podcast anymore. So. Oh, oh whoa, whoa, no! Whoa. <laughs> oh no, it's all crumbling now. <laughs> Jose, you know the kind of connections you have, right, man? Fuck, you should be able to make this happen. Yeah, yeah you, you yeah. should get a real programmer. Well, I, 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 yeah, but he's busy making real games, though. So, so. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Alloy Arena 2 for the PS5 win. Come on. We can make <laughs> but it that, happen. That's it. Like Those are the two games I want to work on. Alloy Arena 2 and Newgrounds Rumble. Uh, you know, and actually, there's, you know, there's other programmers out there too, right? You don't just have to zone it. Oh, we're boomers. We understand each other. You can hit up Stepford, Milk Bar Jack. Uh, it's probably busy. We, we, we can definitely though, like, bring in help, but we've got like a history with this game. We've been talking about this fucking game for like fuck, yeah, forever. Besides, if I want a certain idea, I can say, listen, you remember that that scene in, in Robotech? <laughs> oh yeah, okay, that's how I want him to jump. Yo, you I remember mean, that? Yeah, you remember that nineteen? The 1985 film, uh, what's it called? Yeah, you remember that one scene? We're going to make that right here. Josh is like, come on. He's not joking. This <laughs> exactly. is literally how we collaborate. This is oh how my it's God. always happened. It'll be something. <laughs> you remember this coin-op game from 1991 that nobody ever played? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. what I want. I want. I want that move. Right there. But, I want that mechanic. But In it's fact, a dating have set. I not been telling you play uh, <laughs> Tiny Toons yeah. versus Bad Dream? forever he's, he's been like, telling me to play this fully. tiny two games and I he, I he wants me to play the whole game and i'm, I'm watching youtube videos like okay i get it i don't have to play it do i no but, you yeah. got to play it you know, <laughs> you know what i'm that, saying that, like it's got like this crazy trapping abilities it's like it's like street <laughs> fighter man and i want all of that in alloy too so you, once you get to the bosses you'll understand you'll see you, you but probably remember, you gotta use passwords because it doesn't save because oh, it doesn't man. save oh man that's nostalgic right there holy shit yep yeah. i like that but oh. uh yeah so yeah those are the two games i'm hyped for and yeah and i do want to get some i want to get some little alloy short animations out so you'll see some well, of that what how did you make the figures in the past because i've seen like some mind chamber figures or like that i've seen f bot as a figure i've seen Oh well, the last one I did was I took the F the F. Uh, wait, no, I didn't make an F five figure. You might be talking about there's a there's a user that did all of them in clay and they came out great. Oh, okay, man, okay. so bad with names. But uh, no, the only thing I have is Peabot, and I printed them out. Uh, I have a printer right beside me over here, and I, I printed them out using um, the three D model that I used to uh, to do all the the little intros for uh, uh, what was it. Tank, Tank Day, uh, two thousand eight or something. So I, yeah. I created him there for that, and then I ended up using the model to help the the guy make the giant star, uh, styrofoam version. And then from there, I actually just had I just took that model and just printed it out. Uh, and I plan to reprint him. I, I painted him by hand. It looks like ass because I don't have a good hand. But I definitely oh, man. want to make him bigger. Yeah, I, I showed it. I think I showed it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, a little 3D printed alloy would be cool. Like, oh, yeah. That, no, you know, but everyone has that attachment to it. Like, anyone who wants to support you would love to, like, scoop up some, some dope merch. Hell, like yeah. That. Get that swag, baby. Get that yeah. swag, baby, but it's handcrafted. That's what matters. It's not some red <laughs> fucking... I did this with my own hands. I'm waiting my on the alloy hands. thong. I want the alloy thong. The alloy thong, finally, <laughs> oh, yes. The alloy helmet. The <laughs> The whole yeah, helmet. Man. There you go. That'd be dope. Just actually. get a bike helmet. You'll be fine. The one. Just get a bike. Yeah, but that's what it is. They don't understand that you just spray painted a bike helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to them. The returns are great. You're making great money off of it. That's I guess. Perfect. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Let's see. Jose uh, Ortiz, everybody. Um, yeah. This guy. This guy. This guy. He's, go he's going to go places. 
Is he? <laughs> Finally, yeah. <laughs> to my grave. He's back to new grounds, back baby. To, he's he just sucks you back he's, in. He's just a late bloomer. Don't worry about it. He's going places. <laughs> yeah. Everyone that everyone that hates FNF hates Mind Chamber too, because he said it here, folks. FNF brought him out of retirement. So you got to <laughs> live with that. <laughs> You can't hate you can't hate on one without hating on the other. Amen, right. man. Amen, baby. And I'm I'm super excited for you. Oh my god, just seeing well, seeing an artist back in action, someone that someone fresh into the field. I can't wait to see what you do. And I'm I, excited and as well. I think you're underestimating your own power because, like, I know you don't like to be aggressive or like tell people what to do and shit. But like, it'd be nice for you to see you hit up the people that you work with normally normally like Josh or 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 even just hit up Tom see what could happen there every new grounds alumni i mean is there not a new grounder that doesn't know mind chamber like especially because of Peabot and the other robots and your designs and new grounds rumble like lewis you could you could collaborate with lewis easily Hell like yeah. i'm jealous come yeah. on <laughs> It's, it's you have a lot time. of power you, you, can work, you can work with anybody you want at this point in the community i think i think it would happen well, that, mm, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I don't think that many people know me, though, honestly, because um, a lot. I mean, if it, like I said, if it wasn't Friday Night Funkin', they would know me. They know me like by proxy, the Pico. But for the most part, uh, I just think, uh, you know, there's just a handful of really old old guys that did, you know, <laughs> that, uh, well, that, I, that I, are, I, I disagree. But you're, you're talking about the Friday Night Funkin' fans. But the art community on Newgrounds, they, they're not all from there. There's a lot of people who know the Newgrounds lore. They know all the characters. And they know who designed Pico, who made Peabot. They've seen your portfolio. They love Alloy. They've played the shit out of Newgrounds Rumble. Like, they know you. And they're they're the active groups right now. And I think I think there's a lot of people you could work with really easy if you if you just put it out there. So. All right. Or, I mean, there's I'll just an audience... There's just the audience of people who played your shit back in the day, and now they're like they're doing something else, but they got money to you know yeah, work those, a job that, now. That 13 year old that loved your game like way back when it came out, they're like grown ass adults with skills now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You just, well, you, you described the guy who's gonna who's gonna program uh, the second Rumble, so yep. he, I, I think you know who I'm talking about. So I don't want to blow him up because I don't know if he's allowed to even. Like if I'm, you know what I'm saying? It's like that. I'm not sure about the NDA stuff with when it comes to where he what works. is he? 14 years old? He needs his parents' bank account. What's going? <laughs> what? What's going on here? I can't say his name. His parents might come after me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Well, I'm definitely. Excited. I'm excited. How about that? What are you? When are you launching the Patreon, dude? When's that coming out? When's the uh, Kickstarter? You gotta get the documents together. What does that mean? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> animations well, I, come on well, right now i mean unfortunately i i don't have anything really to offer just yet i mean i, I do i i guess i can i can you know offer streaming uh but i don't know i feel like i need to put something out and i need to have something tangible before i actually like really hit it so i am going to be working like i said i am going to be finishing up the doc and i want to have at least some type of video prototype of that running once that happens, then yeah, I'll jump right onto it. Uh, the alloy stuff is probably going to happen sooner because that's all on me, so that's easier to to, to work with. Um, and I actually was um, going to bother uh, Sabrina about it because I want to know if I should put it on Substack or I should put it on Webtoons because I do want to put the comic up eventually. On I've heard those. bad things about Webtoons. I know a lot of comic artists like Luke Valentine Art and Mackle, they use Tapas. Uh, dot io i think is what it is tapas dot io all right tapas, i'm writing that T-A-P-A-S. down p-a-s yeah so if you want to read splatter brain or mackle ng's uh choke point you can read those on tapas but i mean obviously sabrina's like a good pool of information same with anyone else who like josh said happy harry i i, I mean does do you and harry know each other can you ask him how to run a patreon can you ask like you have people you can reach out to for like every single sure. one of these things yeah, no, I mean, I just, I mean, like, I just quit, so I, but uh, I, <laughs> get your I, business I'm, model together I'm right excited. <laughs> I feel like the gun, like, got shot off, and we're at this fucking starting line. I'm just waiting like, to, to we bolt. Just, we're just really excited for you, and we want it to happen. Like, we, we don't, we don't want to wait. Come on, man. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not that. It's just, I'm just pumped. I'm just, I, I can't explain. Like, I'm excited too, man. I get I, to learn from your experience too, you know. And I just seeing you succeed would would fill me with joy. So, whatever. Oh, that's, that's very sweet. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, man. 
<laughs> if it weren't for you, we wouldn't have P bot, F bot, M bot, A bot, G bot, I bot. I think that's all of them. I'm great yeah. at this. Yeah, you got them all, man. It's perfect. I'm great at this. I know the alphabet. <laughs> All I right, mean, this uh, probably would have been a lot cooler if, if, if uh, Pico School 2 was finished. Yeah, the demo's still out there. We can always finish it. We can always... Yeah. I don't know, I don't know what Tom thinks about that. Yeah. I think Tom, Tom probably wants to start it from scratch if it ever happens again. Cause yeah, dude, sure. this didn't age Jose, very well. <laughs> you would have the perfect art style for it, too, for Pico School 2. Be I think cool. it'd be neat. I, I would actually... would I wouldn't mind doing it. In Unity, though, so I don't know if Tom oh. uh, wants to do it outside of Action Script too. And that's Wait, you tell me, Pico School VR? Is that, <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I is that Tom, edgy Tom territory? Needs, Tom needs to produce it. Did I say it. Oculus? Produce it, not code it. He needs to produce it, not code it. Let's get somebody on the coding and get it done. Because he's right. busy. Yeah. We actually have a Patreon question, by the way. Hell yeah. Um. Uh. Wait. Oh. Benny posted in the wrong place. He said, my Patreon question is if Peter the Ant can make an appearance in Newgrounds Rumble 2. Lewis already said, fuck no, but I wanted to ask Mind Chamber. I don't have a picture of Peter the Ant, but it's an ant named Peter. Uh, and, uh, where can I see Peter the Ant? Uh, Josh, can you, look, can you look up Peter the Ant? <laughs> Peter the if Ant. I, if I type, my, my keyboard sounds like a, a typewriter. This it does. Is, uh, it's got that force feedback, huh? Yeah, uh, I can't, uh, can't let that get yeah. into the mic. Can't let the you know microphone. Peter the ant. It's a little ant. Um, Pluffmot, which is actually Tom Fault backwards. Pluffmot designs games, and he made this one where you're Pico, and he's freaking pissed at Peter the ant, and he hits it with a hammer. That's it. That's the whole yeah, game. I can't find a picture. I can find Pico from. It's the... it's in chat. The game is in chat. Yeah. Anyway, yes, he can be in the game, but. <laughs> Wait. Yes, he can, but he won't. He should be like a little character, like just uh, just one just pixel. Put him in the background. Just put him in the background at Pico's level. There you go. There you go. He, he can, uh, you know, because I, I want to add like little like badges that you can put on the characters. So he, maybe he can be like. A, oh my god! Like a pin. What? Yeah. I Dude, that would be uh, the greatest honor. Oh my god. Yeah. So yeah, if you can set. Here's the rule, though. Uh, it's called you know it's called New Grounds Rumble for a reason. So it has to be a character that's from new grounds Absolutely. so yeah no uh you know no uh what is it no what no pokemanes and uh no <laughs> no, no uh i don't know stop <laughs> sending me no messages i'm not so, i'm not putting uh, yeah. markiplier in new grounds rumble 2 guys stop sending uh, me messages he needs to stop. <laughs> no jack septic eyes i don't want none of that uh no garfields i can't tell you how many fucking garfields got sent to me uh <laughs> no Mc Ronald McDonald's, no Shaggy from Scooby Doo. There you go, exactly. So yeah, there you go. But yeah, uh, yeah. I would like uh, it's like I said. Uh, you know, <clears throat> writing a doc is easier than actually you know executing it. So we'll see what gets in. But I definitely want to have a lot of customization. So maybe down the line you'd be able to kind of make someone similar to who you want. But that's not affirmative. It's just written. So. But yeah, we'll everything see. right now is ideas, which is why I'm so excited. Promised. He just promised it, guys. If he doesn't deliver, <laughs> I, I can probably have to get cancel you. him. You know what? I'll make sure if you send me the, the ant dude, I'll make sure that he's a, a badge on one of the characters. Oh my god, <laughs> Benny! Fan service, fan service, dude. This is what you get for being a patron. Yeah, once you, if you were a patron on uh, the Newgrounds podcast right now, you could get your character in the Newgrounds Rumble. If you're not a patron, too fucking bad. You missed the boat. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, yeah. now that would be I got a lot another cool. It was called Patron. I like that. Patron, and Patron. then they could have a robot fucking mascot. Jesus, Hell you're yeah. genius. Patron. We need to bring back nude grounds and get you paid. <laughs> Subscription based porn is how we take Mind Chamber out of retirement. Yeah, it's the only it. way. That's it. Uh, All right, uh, Def Def Peanut asks Mind Chamber, "How did you learn to draw in the style you do?" Yeah, why is it like that? Flash. <laughs> I ink on paper. Is yeah, pretty why? much. Uh, I was too. I was too young to hang out with uh, cousins that used to that used to um, spray paint. Uh, so I would just look at their books, and I loved their books. Uh, I have a couple of cousins that were in Philly that when we would visit, I would just um, go and look at. The, they had like huge binders of photographs of all the of all the um, trains that they bombed, which were fantastic. And that style always kind of stuck with me. 
Also, I don't like straight lines. So it works. Kind of works out for me. I don't. It gets to be messy. Yeah, I like being messy. So it's it's just go. like fun. I like to be. I like to kind of draw the the way the way the character is supposed to feel. So if it's a soft character, and you can see I have tender lines. If it's angry, I start just fucking putting grooves into my cintiq. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> Damn. But uh, I like, yeah, I like hearing you describe your art too, man. That was nice. Yeah, that's yeah. A lot of I was a big fan of a lot of um, a lot of kids and uh, a lot of um, older cousins that used to do some really really nice graffiti. It also, I'm like a that. huge fan of uh, Ralph Bakshi. So, as long as you're not six, get every cartoon you can of Ralph Bakshi, and 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 you'll you'll see why I draw the way I do. Ralph Bakshi. Hmm. Oh How my god. That? How do I spell Bakshi? No, I know I'm going to drive you nuts, dude. <laughs> Ralph Bakshi did the original Lord of the Rings cartoon. I know you must know okay. that. And the wizards. Everyone knows that. He also did Fritz the Cat. Wizards. Fritz the Cat. Oh, Wizard. Yeah, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, he did Wizard. Wicked oh. City, Coonskin, Heavy Traffic. Might be the same movie actually. <laughs> Guys, am I really this young? Are you guys just that yes. freaking old? No, What's you're going the, on here? These movies blew our minds back in the day. Like there was nothing like it. Yeah, between between his cartoons and um, heavy metal, I, that the, those were mind blown for me. And uh, yeah, those always stuck with me. Heavy how metal. Old you when you, how old were you when you saw heavy metal the first time? When did it come out? Because I saw it in theaters. Oh shit! I don't remember. My dad took me when it came out, and I was like fucking. <laughs> uh, yeah so i was i was pretty horrified and blown away that the the um the world war ii scene was 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 just ghastly dude that like i just that was haunting forever so violent fucking yeah, it was awesome big old animated titties i mean it had it all oh yeah I, I didn't know like yeah i was like wait am i supposed to watch this am I supposed wow. to watch right <laughs> Yo, if you want to be like Mind Chamber, just scar yourself with some some media. Yeah, and you'll be forced you to draw it to get it out of your nightmares. If you're trying to get your son to be Mind Chamber, just take him to all these movies now. Yes, and just leave. <laughs> just make and sure then just leave it. him in his room for a yeah. week with no food or water. <laughs> <laughs> just keep sliding them just 80s paper. horror movies under the desk, under the table. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that. What else did I? What else would it do? Um, what, what, well, I what, guess with the what? robot stuff, it's all Voltron and and Robotech. That was Voltron, Robotech, and Transformers. Movies. Yeah, yeah. There we go. And the other questions they already asked. So that's pretty much it for our patron questions. It's pretty much it for Mind Chamber. I think. I think we gotta we gotta close the chamber on this this mind on this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We gonna put Jose <laughs> back in the cage. This it's has been Brain Cage. cage. Brain cage. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> lightning horrible. sound effects oh brain <laughs> thank you you just got brain caged oh uh, that does sound like an 80s show right there sounds like mind freak dude. <laughs> oh yeah yeah i just got that. brain caged oh god <laughs> all right uh are we doing a shout out to the patrons are yeah we, we do, do that we do got to yeah well we got a couple we got old school just signed up recently so uh thanks oh, for that okay. got nice. uh got disa and zachary jones uh, we got Spectre Lee, we got Gio Corelli, Daft Peanut, Teresa, Boozle, Benny Bacon. Oh, this is going to be a long list. I don't know if you guys should sign up. I can't read this all. Anymore. You sound like, you sound like <laughs> the, the girl. Here's an old throw, uh, blast from the past. You sound like uh, one of the girls from Magic Garden. Do you remember that? Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, my God. So good to talk to someone in my Hell age. Yeah. I love it. All right. I like how to- it's... I, how it sends no synapses off in my brain whatsoever when you say that. You say <laughs> well, Magic okay, Garden. So my brain is just empty. It's just dead airways. It was, I, I'm not sure if it was actually before Sesame Street, but it was a similar sh- kind of show where it's like two girls teaching kids, singing along and all that. And at the end, she would say goodbye to everyone, but she would uh, use this magic mirror that supposedly was able to allow her to see through the TV. And yeah, she like, said bye to I us. See Joey and Tommy and Bill and Tad. She said and my she name go- once. It was real. Dude. <laughs> she never said my name. That's because she's I racist. Was so disappointed. Exactly. Yeah, she saw your fan mail and spit on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Threw it away. Jesus. <laughs> oh, I forgot where I left off. I don't know if I said Benny Bacon. All right. Then we got our Benny Bacon. Patrons. Terrifax, Leon, Kevin Polo. Woo! 
And then our $20 Ultimate Grand Super Patrons, Cortat G and Mr. Tom Falk. Woo! Yeah. All right, that's our yeah. patrons. Yeah. And then another yeah. shout-out we got to give, we do have in it. Exactly a week from today, the Newgrounds Summer Fucking Block Party, bitches! Woo! Yeah, it's coming together. I got two t-shirt designs designed by someone very special. Someone you might know. Someone this one's very cool. Ooh. Yeah, two two t-shirt designs that are gonna be released on Shark Robot for a limited run. And all the proceeds will go to Newgrounds, so it's kind of like a little fundraiser, you know. Yeah. You some some really cool merch. Nice. Uh, Everything we, we're not releasing. We're not releasing the Good. t-shirts yet. We're gonna get it all set in stone, and then hopefully we can come up with a cool like Monday post, get everyone hype about it, and get either like pre-orders or whatever you guys want. I mean, it's the shirts are cool, so whatever. definitely, definitely. Oh my check god, out I just party. found the chat this whole time. Boomer <laughs> 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 Tech for the <laughs> win, yes. Speaking of this boomer, he is going to be at the party with us. Um, We've got a bunch of events uh, already lined up. Um, Me personally, I've got a little show at the beginning. I'm going to be doing with uh, Stepford, uh, Benny. uh, Oh, my God. Look at all these butt chambers. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be doing a little talking about Game Jam. But then later in the day, uh, Mind Chamber, Johnny Utah, Lewis, Hans, uh, Bomb Tunes. Am I missing anybody? Fucking somebody else. Oh, Ivan. Uh, myself and uh, shit on a stick. We're gonna all get on and we're gonna stream us <laughs> awesome. playing fucking champed up and drawing dicks and shit. So yeah. So be... if you want to see Jeff like say UG in real time, real life, show up, uh, yeah, and show yeah, up to the so draw. that'd be fun. Zen's got a bunch of art panels getting lined up. Corey's gonna do some improv comedy with some voice actors. Probably gonna watch a movie at the end. I, at this point, I think we're watching Team America World Police. Uh, so that should be fun. Nice. All the the puppet yeah. sex. Yeah. It's gonna be a oh, fucking mind good time. chamber. Yeah. What do you think of what do you think of Podchan? Because I know you saw our design. Ah, that was really cute. I actually was gonna um I just haven't had time yet, but I actually was going to uh draw draw a little fan art of it. What? Be, be careful what? if you do if you do that, Red uh-huh. Queen might die. Red Queen might die. She will literally die on the spot. Yeah, so be careful. <laughs> she loves alloy. She's I, a big alloy oh, okay, fan. cool. Oh my god. <laughs> who 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 did this fucking? Who did, who did the um, the alien snatch attack drawing over here? The alien <laughs> snatch. I thought that was from the game. I thought that was no, from the that's a, that's a totally shot. Come on. <laughs> is, I thought it was a screenshot. That's hilarious. Hey, you. All right. This Sorry, episode well. has been brought to you by Alien Snatch Attack. Thank you everyone for listening. Uh, and Uber, this and is Uber. your host Zin Zenix, and also Psycho Golf Fish. Yeah, <laughs> we were visited here by Boomers Central. If you guys, hopefully, you guys learned something or or felt foolish for not knowing something. So remember, like, kids, check your prostate. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go yell at some plaids now. Yeah, All right, see guys, you in mind man. chamber. It was fun. Hell yeah, we'll see you in a week, buddy. Yeah, All goodbye. Right. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Right, don't get lost. Someone follow him on the way out. We gotta make yeah, sure he make, get make lost. Sure he, make sure he gets to his uh, little handicap transport bus, the short one. Thank you for listening to the New Grounds podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye. All right, so I, I have the option to exit quietly. What's the other one? Loudly the other one is, uh, it, it leaves with an air horn. It goes, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please add that. <laughs> Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. It's been a hell of a show. Take it easy. What the fuck? No, he didn't. He knows he didn't actually have to leave, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can hang out if you want, Jose. We're gonna, we can, you can chat with the people. I mean, wait. I don't Ooh. even think he's in. Uh, is he in the listening? No. He's Invite gone. him back. I think he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I, I just wait, hold on. My chamber. Come back. We will. We're, I just we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna Damn let it. the audience ask you questions, Big Sav. <laughs> that was that was that that was just the podcast ending. <laughs> <laughs> no, come you know, back. You know he's not gonna see it. He did. He just found the chat. He's not gonna see this. God damn it! Come back! Come back! I can't get to the bottom of this chat. Oh. 
follow follow my voice. <laughs> he can't hear you. Follow my voice. Since Zenix, I have a question. Well, our guest our guest is currently in purgatory, so I don't know if we're gonna get to that question. <laughs> I can help him out, but I have to message him on Facebook because that's Dude, what us boomers use. This is exactly what it's like dealing with a boomer on Discord. They just wander off, and you're, yeah, yeah. you're trying to herd them back. Heads <laughs> off. <laughs> oh man, I just like you come to this. You come to the server. There is a lot of a lot of chats going on. I guess. <laughs> Did you see the the picture from Waffle in the art gallery? It's adorable. Uh, it's adorable. In Art Gallery? Let me see. You gotta scroll down. I haven't seen it. Daft Peanut says they follow... Uh, oh, wow. That is adorable. Thank you, Waffle. What the hell? Wow. I'm pinning that. 